Hey folks, how's it going? Peter here with BlackRock Business. Uh, today we are going to do a quick video about QuickBooks point of sale departments. So most retail businesses related merchandise is grouped into departments and establishing and using departments is a good way to monitor sales performance. It's also a good way to manage inventory and run meaningful reports, which will help you make an informed buying decision when you're going to buy from your vendors. A well-designed department structure will also save you time and give you greater flexibility when conducting a physical inventory, changing prices, and printing price tags. So how many departments should you have? Well, that's totally dependent upon what type of store you have. Um, obviously, from store to store, you're going to want to group your products into uh, different departments according to uh, what makes sense for you. Uh, a big thing you might think about when making departments is how might I want to compare uh, profitability or or um, how much how much product and items are being you know sold through each department and you might want to up your money there your output uh, of uh, cost of goods so we're just gonna check into this real quickly you can see on the screen the department list is right here if you're just starting with point of sale, uh, this is going to be one of your first stops that you're going to make. You're going to want to create departments before you actually add, start adding items so that you can put them into the departments. Uh, one key thing I will show you here, we're going to add a new department just so I can show you how that works. In adding a department, we have department code, which normally should be like three or four letters. Uh, let's see, I'm going to make a department for boots I guess so we might do uh, I guess I only get three we're gonna do three we got BOO or we can do BT or BOT which kind of seems like bots so I think I'm just gonna keep at BOO uh, the department code is gonna be a quick short way that you can identify where a product is from some people like to put the department code on their price tags and that might help them in returning merchandise to the floor. Or if you uh, want to segregate out certain reports, you can have that column included so you can quickly and easily see uh, where an item is from without having to read the entire department. Uh, I know that seems trivial, but here in the business world, every second counts and the quicker you can be and the harder you can work and the more you can produce is obviously gonna be a better bottom line for your store. So next we're going to look at the actual department name. In this case, it's pretty easy. You can do boots. Uh, I, I probably wouldn't recommend getting too granular. I mean, if I was a shoe store, I might put boots and shoes and heels, etc. But if I'm just a regular clothing store or um, uh, some regular department store, I would probably just have one section for footwear or shoes or something like that. If you get too granular, then suddenly it's harder to group that entire section together. If you have boots and heels and uh, tennis shoes and sandals, but your store, that's not your store's like main product, is footwear altogether, then when you go to try and compare on reporting, you're going to have all sorts of different departments and you're not going to really be able to they're not going to be large enough to compare to other parts of your store now very important here we got tax or non uh, this totally comes in handy in a lot of states uh, I I'm here in Minnesota and for example if we're talking about a clothing boutique just to continue that theme uh, we have non taxable on on most clothing but then taxable on accessories like jewelry or belts or other things that aren't ex aren't quite clothing. Don't don't make me uh, quote tax laws because I'm not an expert on those. However, uh, setting tax or non for a particular department should make sense. And the great part about this is once I set this here, then when I create an item, it'll automatically set it for the item. I don't have to remember on every single item I'm creating whether it's taxable or non, because setting it in the department is going to automatically uh, set it up when you create the item. Now, margin percent or markup percent, these these don't exactly calculate over or automatically set up when you create an item. It's more like uh, a guideline. If you've figured out how, how much of a markup you should do on jewelry or shoes or whatever, 
you can put that in here and it's just kind of a way to keep it for later just to reference so if I've decided that my boots are gonna have a 30 percent markup hopefully it'll be more than that but uh, I'm gonna save that and then later on I can remember that just by looking at my departments list so uh, for a further example just as far as the tax or non I'm just gonna jump right over to the inventory item list and create a new item so uh, I'm gonna make some real sweet boots and I'm gonna choose the department which is going to be boots and we can see that automatically it sets it as taxable um, from there of course uh, creating an item altogether is another uh, video for another day, but this pretty much is the overview of departments and how you can use them. Um, just going to jump into reporting real quick. Uh, let's say sales item summary. So if I want to make a report for uh, for sales items uh, to see how much I've been selling, one thing now I can easily do is I can either filter or add the column. We'll start here adding the column. So we do have the department column and you can see over here it's kind of crushed but we've got uh, jewelry and scarves and basics and all that kind of stuff. So uh, if we want to order by department it would actually categorize and order all these things by department on the report which can be helpful. Now we have subtotals. Uh, another thing you can do with departments in reporting is to filter out your data. So if I just want to look at the sales here, but say I only want to see all the sales summary from one department. So that's pretty easy as long as I can find my department filter. Here it is. So I can click on this and I only want to look at jewelries and dresses today so I'm going to save that and run it and now it's only going to show me that on my report so really useful to set up a comprehensive set of departments once again my name is Peter with BlackRock Business and you can come to us for all your point of sale needs uh, promotions and discounts blogs tutorials videos go, go on over to blackrockbusiness.com look us up there and uh, check out what we got you have a great day now bye